How's it going guys? My name is Dom and in today's video I'm going to be showing you how to create these scrollable tables that includes uh, both a floating uh, table header and snap scrolling for each row. So if I was to scroll down here we can see that if I was to stop about halfway between a row like for example uh, row six at the top there. If I let go, it's going to snap up to the beginning of that row, of course, making the user experience a little bit better. So this here is actually quite straightforward to achieve using a couple of CSS properties, not too much code. And we're going to be starting in this tab right here. Um, so the table that I'm going to be using already exists, of course. I've got some data in it and I've also got some basic CSS styling, but we can see if I scroll down, uh, we don't get that scrolling effect on the table itself, as we can see from this one here, it's got a fixed height. And of course, the table header is not going to stay floating above everything else. Just quickly, if you only care about the floating table header, I've got a video dedicated to that one, which I'm going to be leaving in the top right corner of this video. So let's jump into VS Code. I'm going to show you how to achieve this right here. So we can see here I have this index.html document with the table. Let me get rid of this uh, wrapper div, we'll come back to that later on. But uh, this here is what your table should probably look like. You have the table like this, maybe a class on it, and you have your table data, okay? Now, going inside the CSS file, it currently looks like this here. I've got a couple of styles applied to the table, just some font family, some border collapse, a width set on the table, as well as a background color for the table header cells and a text line of left there. And then down here, of course, just some padding and also a background color for every even row. So just quickly, if you want to know how to do that, well, you simply use the NTH of type even and then you can set your background color inside here to apply to only every second row. Just a side note, right? Okay, fantastic. So let's, let's jump into getting this table scrollable within its own container. So... The way this is going to work is we're going to utilize a couple of things. Let's begin with uh, the sticky table headers. So basically when I scroll down, I want to keep the headers floating above everything else. So going inside uh, this selector, so we can see here, I'm selecting uh, every single table header cell, okay? Going inside the HTML, we can see that uh, these th elements or these table header cells are within the t head of the table. So it's important that you are able to select these table header cells in your own table. If you don't have these th cells, I recommend that you create them. Okay, fantastic. Going back inside here now, I'm going to target each th and then we're going to add two properties. Firstly, a position of sticky okay, and a top of zero. Let's save this, go back in the browser. And now if I scroll down inside this tab, my apologies, if I scroll down, we can see we get a floating table header. All right, that's all it took to get that table header floating. Now, it is also important to uh, mention that the top of zero is going to dictate how far off the top of the screen the floating header is. If I say, for example, 20 pixels, save this back in the browser, it is now going to be 20 pixels down. So we can see that space right there. Now, essentially, look, this position of sticky is going to, yeah, make the table header float above everything else, much like a position of fixed does. But of course, uh, it's going to work in this context with the table header and you can set that top of 20 pixels. All right. Fantastic. So we have this first part set up. Let's bring this top back down to zero. The next part, you know, to actually get the table data scrollable instead, instead of it being a one big table, we need to essentially decide on a height for the table because if you want to have a scrollable table, you need to essentially make a decision about how high you want your table to be. 
This may come from the container around it. For example, if you're using a grid system, you might have a grid item with a table inside of it and that there is going to dictate the height. But the point is you must have a height set against your table. So going back inside the code here, we need to have a wrapper around our table. This wrapper is then going to say, look, overflow Y of auto to make it scroll when the content overflows. Okay, so let's make a new div with a class of scrollable dash table. Inside here, let's move the table just like this. All right. I can now, let me, let me just quickly, uh, ex uh, what do you call it? Uh, minimize the table data. Okay, make it a bit easier for us. So now the table is inside the scrollable table. We can go back inside the CSS and target the scrollable table. Let's say scrollable table. And then we're going to say here a height of 500 pixels. Let's also give this an overflow Y of auto. Okay. I can now save this, go back in the browser and we get the scrollable table just like this. Okay, we can see, of course, the height of 500 pixels is being applied at the bottom here. And of course, we can scroll. Combining this with the, uh, with the uh, position of sticky on the table headers, we get the floating header and also the scrollable content. All right. Now, it is important to mention that when you have a scrollable container, such as this scrollable table here, your top of zero, this whole position sticky situation, okay? All this here happens relative to the nearest scrollable container. This just simply means that if I set a top of 20 pixels here, save back in the browser, instead of this being 20 pixels from the top of the page, it is now 20 pixels from the top of this scrollable container. This is proven by if I was to go inside here and add some content like this, save this back in the browser, everything gets pushed down, including the floatable header, right? 20 pixels right there. So again, just worth mentioning that, yeah, like I said, it's all going to be relative to the nearest scrollable container, which is perfect for this solution. All right. Now, there is one small problem here. That is that we can see if I inspect this, the scrollable container is actually the full width of the page naturally because it's a div, right? So let's set a width on the scrollable table. Let's make this a width of 400 pixels. Save this back in the browser and it kind of works. Okay. There's an extra little bit of space there on the bottom. I'm getting some... Uh, overflow X here because the table is also 400 pixels and the scroll bar uh, within the table is uh, blowing out that number a little bit. So it's actually better to dictate the, the width on your container as opposed to the table itself. So let's say scrollable table, then select the table class and make this a width of 100%, save this back in the browser and that problem is now gone. So essentially now your table takes up the full width, okay, of its parent, this scrollable table. Now, one thing worth mentioning here is that the reason why this width of 100% was chosen for the table as opposed to this width is because the CSS specificity is higher in this situation. We get 0 to 0, which means this gets chosen over a 0, 1, 0. That's why that works. I've got a whole video dedicated to CSS specificity if you're interested. I'll leave that in the top right corner of this video as well. Okay, so we have the solution working for the most part. Um, the last thing to do is to get that snap working for those rows. And this here is actually really straightforward. We simply need to set a scroll snap type against the scrollable container or scrollable table. So we can say scroll snap type here of Y and then mandatory. Okay. This just means, look, let's get it on the Y axis for the vertical scrolling and then down for each table row. So I'm going to say here table. Uh, table 
and I can say T body, then I can say TR, or even just targeting every table row, right? We can just say scroll snap align and set this to be start. That way it snaps at the beginning of the element, save this back in the browser. And now we can scroll down and it's gonna snap against uh, each one of those table rows just like that. And you have your scrollable table with the floating header and the uh, snapping rows just like that. Very straightforward guys. Um, now, uh, I think it's, uh, you know, just worth saying that, you know, your scrollable table class, maybe it's, uh, you've also got some sort of grid layout going on because again, I think it's going to be quite unlikely that you have a fixed height on your elements. You may have, and it's perfectly fine to do this. Same with the width, but it just kind of feels like to me that uh, most likely you have some sort of other container that has a, you know, a responsive width or something like that. Just keep that in mind uh, before you go and, you know, hard code some values here. So that is all for this video. Hope you guys enjoyed that one and you did, uh, uh, and you learned something. Um, if you did, make sure to drop a like and subscribe to the channel and I'll see you guys in the next video.